Heather Donahue, you are the uh, one of the stars of uh, FXX's You're the Worst and also was in uh, Grease Live uh, recently on Fox. How did, uh, so with You're the Worst, how did uh, that script make its way to your uh, to you and when did you realize that this was something special you know what I rarely say this because it's it's very rare that things just work out for me <laughs> you know what I mean it's, it's nice when things work out but I will say with you're the worst it was one of those meant to be things I was I was living in New York and I wasn't really getting a lot of work at all um, I had booked this uh, car commercial that shot in North Carolina, and I was supposed to go back to New York afterwards. And coincidentally, that same week, I had to fly to LA for an animation callback, which never really had happened before. And that same week, I had my audition for You're the Worst, and I later found out the director of the car commercial, Jordan Boat Roberts, had referred me to the You're the Worst audition. So it was one of those things where it was like, right time, right place, right script, you know, just things kind of, uh, everything was kind of in the right place. And I'll just never forget when I was shooting that commercial, I got the email with the script and the sides, and I was just like blown away by the writing because it's, it's you know, when you're an actor, especially going out for pilot season, you know, you read a lot of comedies that are kind of generic and you, you know, kind of the same thing and right away what I noticed about this script is that it managed to be hilarious laugh out loud comedy but really really had something to say and you know like when I describe the, the show I always like to say it's everything you love about a romantic comedy and everything you loved about I love about like a twisted indie film you know everything kind of put together um, and I I think that was clear in the first script I read and I was just like I just had to go in for it I, I was just obsessed with the script and what's the camaraderie of the cast been like uh, on set it seems like it seems like certain with certain shows you could just tell when the cast just really gels together <laughs> and this is absolutely one of them uh, you Aya Desmond and, and Chris are all just are just wonderful and even some of the other people that aren't um, the aren't in every episode. Uh, it just feels so right. Uh, what was that like in achieving that? It's it's like Matt again. It's one of those things where I'm like, everything just worked out. Like it's just we're all a family. We're really a family. Like if you look at any one of our email accounts or you know, phones, we always have group texts going on with each other. We're always sending each other group emails of just like, you know, when we're not in the same city, we're FaceTiming each other. We just all genuinely get along. And um, Steven jokes around like it's kind of sick how much we all like each other. Um, I think we're kind of like, sometimes we're like a little codependent. You know, like if we all go to a party together and like I can't find Aya, I'll be like, where's Aya? And I'll like have a panic attack and my manager will be like, it's okay. Like you see her all the time. I'm like, I miss her. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it is. I think we just, I actually met Aya in 2010 because we're both New York actresses um, and you meet a lot of the same actresses on auditions and Contrary to what people say, I've found that the acting community is very supportive of each other. You know, you make a lot of your friends going on auditions because you're all in it together. So we just all, our personalities just gel and we're all just very supportive of each other. And uh, I know that over the past two seasons, and I'm guessing with the uh, upcoming third season, which I, once I get a premiere date, I'm going to start a countdown clock um, <laughs> uh, for, to find out to uh, leading up to the premiere. Um, there are just some great lines uh, of, of dialogue that your characters get to say. And it's just one of those things where you just remember a character saying something. What has been some of your favorite lines that Lindsay has had over oh, the past two seasons? Oh, man. There's so many. Okay. I love in the diner scene when I slap her and I'm like, are you a little born yesterday diaper face? <laughs> For some reason, I just like, I loved saying that. Oh, 
in episode seven of season one, I uh, the the line where I'm like, I'm not I'm um I'm not Kelly Rowland, I'm Beyonce. If I'm sitting in a if I'm in a motorcycle, I'm riding the motorcycle. I'm sitting in one of those shitty motorcycles for poor people and dogs. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant line written by Allison Bennett. Um, I love when Aya says that she has mean cartoon eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's not one of Lindsay's lens, but I love that line. Oh my god, there's so many. I I I love the I love that that type of line where people where where, where someone says you know uses an analogy and says I'm not going to do this with poor people and commoners. <laughs> I love lines like that. It's or like, like a it's... doctor costume for ladies, gross or like or like <laughs> fake. That's or I like, love that. Or when she's like, do you have a keychain or like you you. You let you don't have your keychain from Ralph's anymore, or something, and I'm like, keychains are for pores, or I think something, <laughs> something to that effect. I but love were... Lindsay's disdain for she's so afraid to come off like a poor person. <laughs> It, it it almost reminds me of like of like some of the great insults that you would hear in the prime of the Simpsons that Mr. Yeah. Burns had. And I, I love it. It's just oh, it's just wonderful. I know. They come so, up with some brilliant stuff in that writer's room, I have to say. So you were also uh, most uh, recently in uh, the production of Grease Live that aired on Fox. Uh, what was your favorite thing about doing that sort of thing live on uh, live for you know for audiences around the country? Oh my God! It was just like there is no time to think to judge what you're doing. To, like you are. For, I mean, that what I love in the, about theater in general is that you're so forced to be present in the moment because there's no, you know, you, you can't rely on editing. You have to keep everything fresh. Um, but just in this production, we were going in golf cart. You know what I mean? You'd finish a scene. Like, for example, the um, Freddie, my love, the bedroom scene. When we're in the bedroom in our pajamas, from that time to when we go out to sing Freddie My Love, we had 11 seconds to change from our pajamas into the Freddie My Love uh, sailor suit. And then I think we had like 22 seconds to change back from the sailor suits into the pajamas. And it was, it was amazing. Like in rehearsal, we would rehearse those changes like it was a dance sequence. You know what I mean? There would be you know, wardrobe here, like taking off my underwear and then like, you know, a wardrobe person, like, and it was like, we were all, um, it, it just, it was such a well-oiled machine and everybody had to be on point and everything was like a dance. And that for me was my favorite part because everybody just had to, you couldn't do anything alone. You, what I liked about it was the camaraderie of everybody having to come together like we were in this really um rhythmic dance so that was that was my favorite part of it and uh you know one thing i've noticed that you have uh this is now a new thing that we're seeing within tv you know a lot of they're doing they're airing live performances of uh you know celebrated shows from the stage you know we had mm -hmm. uh peter pan sound of music and um oh, what was the other one? Oh, the Wiz. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm curious, you're someone who also comes from a theater background. If there was one role you could play in a in any live production, so it doesn't have to be necessarily commercial, this is your dream, what would it be? Would it be musical or any any play? Musical. Let's let's concentrate on the musicals. Ooh. Oh, this is a this is a hard one. Cause there's a lot of them that I like. Um, oh my God. You can name a couple. That's fine by me. <laughs> I really would want to be in the wizard of Oz. <laughs> um, I like the ones that were already made. Like I, I would want to be in the sound of music. Um, hairspray. They're doing a hairspray one. I As think. Tracy? Yeah. That that would be pretty That'd fun. Be awesome. I think Tracy and Hairspray. That would be pretty awesome. That would be. Yeah. Um, 
uh, one of the, uh, back to you're the worst though. Um, one of the other things I love about it is uh, I find a lot of times, you know, actors sometimes get um, pigeonholed sometimes when they get into a character that, that immediately that, that takes off if they weren't know if they weren't particularly known beforehand. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, and they're automatically assumed to be like this popular character they created, even though, you know, they're actors. And so they create these characters. But mm -hmm. I, I was wondering when you, when you were reading any of the parts with Lindsay, uh, either at first or maybe even the more recent season, um, is there anything that you saw Lindsay do and you said to yourself, Ooh, that's kind of like me. <laughs> oh, well, season one, because I had just gotten out of a long-term relationship and I had not been single for a long time, I was definitely in my fun single phase. You know what I mean? Where I was like, I wanted to go on dates and have kind of weird experiences and like, you know what I mean? I was like, you know what? Now's the time to go out there and, you know, date people, like, you know, hook up with some randos, stuff like that. So I think season one, given the time that I was in in my life in terms of like loving being single, you know, like when I'm hooking up with that kid in the van, I'm like, all right, you know, I could see myself <laughs> doing something like that. <laughs> um, I do love to eat a lot in real life. So anytime I have an eating scene, I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, how amazing is this that for my job? Like, cause one time Steven said, cause I think during Greece, I was losing weight, some weight naturally cause I was dancing so much. And I saw Steven and he's like, well, you're not allowed to lose too much weight now. Like, and I was like, how cool is this that I have a boss that's telling me not to lose weight? Like, this is like an actress's dream, you know, because I think a lot of actresses feel pressure to be thin. Um, so that's something I like about playing Lindsay that I find is similar to me, that I just, I like to eat and I'm not ashamed of it. I always get hungry during those diner scenes. It's just the, the food always looks so good. Well, also, that's the thing. Whenever I watch a movie, for some reason, I've always been fascinated. Whenever I watch a movie or a show and and, they're, and people are eating something, they make the food look so good. And I always say in my head, I'm like, I want to make food look good in a scene. Like, I just love it. And sometimes you don't know what they're eating and they're, like, mm, and they're just talking and munching and you're like, what are they eating? It looks so good. Co scenes with cocktail parties. Those are the ones that always get me. Oh, yeah. I'm just like, I want to be in a room with hors d'oeuvres just floating around me. I know. Oh, <laughs> the pasta scenes. Those are the best. You know? that, <laughs> that noodle scene with Chris, one of my favorites to shoot. <laughs> I'm like, can we do another take, please? <laughs> and so, but also like getting back to sort of going back to Greece. I mean, you also got to sing on the last season of You're the Worst. And it was for a lot of people, including myself, that was a real highlight with you putting uh, your uh, uh, your voice on that on that track and that and of course the whole madness that ensued during the <laughs> radio station promotion, which was hilarious. What was that like getting to display that part of your that that part that part of yourself in it within that within that realm the amazing thing is because i so i grew up in new york city and i went to school with a, i went to a performing arts high school where there were so many professional singers that like you know took lessons and, and were on broadway and i i always was just like no i'm an actor i never felt like i had a right or the audacity to say I'm a singer because that wasn't my field. I was never involved in musical theater and I had never professionally trained for it. And I almost, I would just see all these friends of mine who trained so hard at singing that I, I, I thought it would be, you know, like I didn't really have a right to say I'm a singer if I'm not training in it. So singing, I never thought I could sing until I had an audition for Pitch Perfect years ago and my manager was like hey for the audition you have to prepare 16 bars of a pop song and the sides and i was like oh no like the director's gonna know i'm a fraud like i don't i'm not a singer he's like, you know just act like you could sing so i was like i went to the audition like all right i'll just sing when i sing at karaoke so i sang natural woman at my audition 
And all my singer friends were like, Heather, why would you sing an Aretha Franklin song? Like, if you know you're not a singer, why would that be your choice? And I was like, ignorance was bliss. Because I, I just went in like, oh, I sing this at karaoke. I'll sing After Women. So I sing it, not really thinking anything. And the director is like, okay, that was good. This time I really want you to belt it out for me. But I didn't know what belting was. Like, that's how much of a non-singer I was. So I was like, oh, I... I love belting. Of course I prepared a belting version. My I'm just like, whatever belting is, let me do it, please. So I guess I belted because I got the part. But I felt like I was frauding my way through the whole movie. Like when I was in the studio and they're like, give us a high C note. I'm like, I love high C notes. I just, I kept pretending I could. It's so belt. delicious and liquidy. And, and then so after that, um, my boyfriend at the time made it his ringtone, uh, my solo from Pitch Perfect. So I thought, okay, for a birthday present for him, let me write him a song for fun. I write him a song and it actually ended up being, you know, kind of a good song. So I sent the song to Steven and I and Chris and Des, and I was just like, hey guys, this is something I worked on that I thought was kind of fun. I casually sent it. And I think that's what gave Steven um, the idea to incorporate singing in the show. So then it was just this cool thing where then when I got this woman's work, I was like, okay, now I better like hire a good vocal coach and take this really seriously. And then it's, it's cool. Like ever since then I've started to gain confidence in singing. And then when Greece happened, I'm like, wow, this is, it's kind of cool when you don't, um, Singing was just something I felt that happened in a very organic way. And it's kind of nice that there's not that pressure to be a great singer and I could do it through the character. You know what I mean? So that's been one of my favorite parts on the show is getting to sing. And it's, and it's been great. And I know that that line, new phone, who dis, uh, definitely, uh, at my trivia league, uh, occasionally there will be a team called new phone, who dis. <laughs> I just like every time it happens, I'm just like, I know the reference. It's become so popular on Insta on Instagram. I'll get all these tags of people. People are making new phone who does hats and like my. I think they should invent a phone case that says new phone who does. I be phone case. I will buy one right away if that happens. FX marketing, you guys are good. Get on that. I tell, well, the cast makes fun of me all the time because my favorite show is Shark Tank. So I'm always coming up with inventions that I want to pitch on Shark Tank. And I'm like, oh, we should go on Shark Tank and pitch the new phone who does cover. <laughs> Mark <Steven. laughs> um, one of the things that was so stark about last season uh, was the uh, was Aya's uh, storyline uh, with her depression, um, and I'm as someone I've suffered from depression, uh, that really just hit such a, a chord in me. And your role as her support, really her only support, especially when she was shutting out uh, Chris's character, um, what was that like when you when you got those scripts and saw like saw a show that was still so funny, but really willing to be very frank about how dark that could be. I was thrilled for many different reasons. One, it just, Steven just continues to amaze me with how bold he is. And when I read that script, I was just like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, I think it showed the bravery of Steven as a writer. Um, and again, how wonderfully supportive FX is to, you know, because that's, that is very rare for a sitcom to address clinical depression in the way you're the worst did. That doesn't happen. Um, and, and, and so I, I applauded it on just on, firstly, on that level of how daring and, and brave it was, because we didn't know how people were going to respond. It could have very easily gone the other way where maybe audiences would have watched and been like oh that's too heavy we don't want to see that because oftentimes people shy away from seeing things that are too much so I thought it was wonderful on that level and then also I too have struggled 
with my own depression um, and, and loneliness. And to play that scene out with Aya was very powerful for me um, because I know Lindsay being the support that she is to Aya when someone really is in a dark, dark, deep depression, it's imperative to have support from, from someone that knows you and doesn't judge you. Um, so that was very great. And, and at this point, when we had shot that episode, Aya and I have, have become like sisters. She's become like the sister I've never had. And so to play that scene with her was very gratifying on many different levels, just portraying that support that is so important when someone's going through a depression and getting to connect with Aya. I mean, even though we're playing each of our characters, you know, she's, she's so real, real in that scene that I, I, all I had to do was watch her and the scene just unfolded because she was so magnificently raw um, and wonderful in that scene. And just when it aired the tweets, I mean, all the tweets and like, People, you know, fans opening up about their own depression, and it's Depression Awareness Week this week. I um, had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea. My 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 lithium must be getting in the way of that, though. <laughs> so I I was just happy a conversation was being started um, in in this way, and it was just nice to be a part of that. Um, I just want to get back to one other thing. We, I, I, I know I'm a bit jumbled with what I'm talking about, but um, I, I was asking you about how uh, you identified with your character. Uh, before we were talking, uh, before we went live, you uh, d told the most wonderful story about, uh, some, about other people identifying with your character. <laughs> and I was just wondering if for our viewers, if you could just give them uh, uh, a little taste of that story. That was it's wonderful. Totally. So um, I was at a restaurant and I was waiting in line. I have a very small bladder. I'm always going to the bathroom. So, <laughs> so does my roommate. A little too much information. Uh, but so I was waiting online for the bathroom and this pregnant lady was next to me and she kept staring at me and I had never gotten recognized before. So it's her staring at me. I didn't think it was because she recognized me. I thought I had like something on my face. Like I was just very confused why she kept looking at me the way she did because she was looking very intensely too. And then she just burst out and she gave me a hug and she's like, "I just have to say it. I love you're the worst." Blah blah. And then she's like, "Look, I have to tell you, I'm married and I'm pregnant, but I still have this inner slut inside of me, and I just Lindsay just makes me feel so okay with my inner slut." And I just gave her a big hug and I was like, I understand. I was like, we all have, you know, you know, the inner beast inside of us that just wants to come out. And like, we just like, I, I, I kind of felt like I gave her a nice um, a therapy session <laughs> about how to be okay with her inner wild woman. Um, but it's been really nice. People come up to me a lot and say that they, I think also people that feel conflicted in relationships that they're in. I think watching Lindsay's storyline, um, it's nice to watch characters on TV who are going through something similar to what you're going through. And it, it makes you feel, um, it just makes you feel seen and heard. Like everybody wants to, to, everyone just wants to be seen and heard. And I think that's the powerful thing. Um, in media, if you can write an article or share an interview or have a storyline on TV that could change or help someone's life, that's pretty incredible. So that's one of my favorite parts is um, hearing experiences of, of fans and how they connect to the character and the show. Well, you've also gotten um, some uh, really other amazing experiences because of this uh, earlier uh uh, late uh, at the end of last year, you got nominated for uh, the Critics Choice TV Award for Best Supporting Actress in a Comedy. What was it like getting the news that that you had gotten that? I well, first of all, because that I would I I didn't even 
I did, it wasn't in my realm of consciousness or thinking that that would ever happen. So I don't, the, that morning, I'll never forget, my manager called me at like 7.30 in the morning or something. And I'm in bed and I look at my phone and I'm like, why is I, I, my first go-to is, oh my God, he's in a car accident. I don't know why I thought that because I'm always getting speeding tickets and like trouble in the car. So I'm like, my first thought is like, oh, maybe he's getting pulled over. Or it's like, I don't know. I, that was where I first went. But then, um... I didn't answer it. Oh my God, that makes me such a bad person. I'm like, oh, uh, I'll call him later. Then he calls again. So I'm like, like, what could he possibly be calling about at 7.30? So then I answer it and then it gets disconnected. So I'm like, oh my God, he's definitely in trouble. And then Stephen Falk texts me, congrats. And I was like, Stephen never texts me congrats at 7.30 in the morning. Like, what's happening? So then I finally got in touch with somebody and, and, um, or both my managers got on the phone. They're like, you got, no. and I, I was just, I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know awards were going on right now. Like I didn't even know that any, anything was being announced that day. Even if I did know, I was not expecting to be a part of that. So, and when I looked at the nominees that were also in the category, I, I mean, like Allison Janney is like, I'm obsessed with her she, and Judith. I mean, just to be in the same sentence as them, let alone the same category was just um, really surreal. And, and what was, and what was it like in the lead up to the ceremony and actually going to that ceremony? It was amazing. It was just, um, it's just so, it, What's important to me is sharing this because are you the worst cast and crew? We've all become a family. And so just the sharing of the joy of the, you know, because when we made this, when you're making something with such an intimate group of people, you don't know how anyone's going to respond. And we knew we liked what we were doing. And it's scary when you put something out there. So the fact that the critics have had such a positive response to it means the world to us and it's, it's just fun and exciting to share the experience you know like just little things like me and I are sending pictures of like outfits we're trying on and um you know just sending each other little videos as we're getting hair and makeup to you know get ready to go there and um and my my best friend from when I'm 15 years old flew out and she was my date to the award show uh, you know, it was just a, a wonderful, magical experience. It was just so nice to share with with everybody. Well, I well, I gotta say, it it this whole thing. Uh, I I love that you're the worst is getting this attention because I always love when it's something that I feel like I may be like one of the only people that knows about it. You know, yeah. gets that kind of recognition, and um, I, we wish you. Uh, the best uh, coming up uh, this with the with hopefully there'll be more awards season uh, buzz going for you. And uh, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank 